welcome to this Lightboard session on how Instant Clones work and how we can push an updated image to the Instant Clones themselves. All right, so I have my gold pristine perfect image, of course, and I took a snapshot of it. And so now I want to build my Instant Clones. Now, one of the things that I would have made sure as part of my gold image was that I installed the Instant Clone piece for the Horizon agent. Now, once that's done, I've powered off my VM, I go through my automated pool creation. Um, we'll then start creating the pieces that we need for the environment. And one of the first things that gets created by uh, the uh, Instant Clone engine, as it were, is the template. Right? So because the template is actually built off of our snapshot, um, it'll be based and it will actually reside in the same cluster as our master image or gold image as we have. So we'll start off, it will be named initially CP template and then a bunch of digits afterwards as part of the image itself. So we'll create our template. We then go ahead and create our replica. Now the thing to remember with the replica, and this is uh, one of the important parts of it, is there is one per data store. So this is my CP replica. And both of these objects are powered off. Okay. So we create our template. Now, it usually takes a little bit of time for the template to initially be created. Once the template's created, then we create a replica. Once the replica is created, we'll go ahead and we'll create our parent. Now with the parent, the thing to remember with the parent is it's on and there is one per ESXi host per data store. Okay, so this is our parent. Now the parent is the part that loads up the OS in the memory and sets up that shared area, as it were. So one of the things that the parent will do, because it's powered on, it'll actually go ahead and create a sort of shared memory location. So this will be sort of our shared memory. And then it will fork off of itself my instant clone. I'll just call it IC. And so the instant clone will read what it needs to from the shared memory, and it will even read from the replica any files that it might need to have access to. But remember that the instant clone essentially becomes almost um, a unique memory location. So it tries to put the things that are separate or different than the parent in that location. Right? And so this whole creation here it takes one or two seconds. It's not that long. But maybe it's patch Tuesday, so I need to update it. So I power my gold. Uh, VM, and with this one here, I create a new snapshot, okay. go through the same process, and then I tell the Instant Clone Engine, I say, hey, I want to push an update. So while my user is logged into, my, into the Instant Clone, we can actually do this in the background, this priming process, um, as, as we call it. And that priming process, if we want to refer to it, really, so that we're clear, it's all of that, right? That's the priming portion, where we actually prepare the back-end pieces. All right, so I have my new snapshot. I have my gold VM. What are we going to do when we do our instant clones? Of course, we're going to start by creating a new template. So here's my new CP template. And it's off, right? We then, of course, create our replica. Also off, and remember what I said? 
There's one replica per data store. Once our replica is created, we'll go ahead and create our parent. And this one is on. And this one, remember, it's one per ESXi host per data store. Now, at this point, we've primed the environment. Remember, as I said, these three pieces here, the creation of these three pieces, is our priming. And this is the part that usually takes the longest. It may take upwards of, say, 20 minutes or so. But this is our priming process that we have within the environment. So that may take 20 or 30 minutes. But once that's done, how do I get my instant clone to attach here? So I tell my user, I send them a note, and I say, log off. So the user logs off. And in that process, when they log off, the instant clone there gets deleted. Um, we've had, uh, as part of our as part of our parent, remember, it will create that shared memory location. Let's call it SM here. And then when the user logs off there and logs back in again, our instant clone gets created. And that becomes our maintenance window. And so they log in again here at this point. And so the time it took for them to log off the, the first one to logging in, is the maintenance window, and that's our push updates done. And so once all of my instant clones are completely logged off, this would all disappear, and I just have the one. And so that's how we actually go through that process. So I hope this Lightboard has helped you understand how instant clones work, and we'll see you the next time in our next Lightboard session.